I was not part of that decision-making process. I was not involved in that decision. I can't possibly know the basis no. on which that decision was taken. I'm afraid I can't recall that, and I don't recall that either, I'm afraid. Again, I was not involved in decision-making. It means I can't answer your question in that form. I can't recall that number, I'm afraid. I can't answer that question because I wasn't there. I'm afraid I can't recall. I'm afraid I can't recall that either. That was a decision I was not party to. I don't know. I'm <laughs>
Um, everybody has an idea of what should have been done, and now that they know what was done and it wasn't done properly, uh, they're much smarter than the coach on the field and the quarterback on the field uh, at the time. So it's very easy to second guess and to uh, point out the, uh, uh, the problems. Yeah, yeah, it's so easy to say this was done wrong and that was done wrong. It's so easy. What exactly is the alternative to doing that, Congressman Barton? What would you rather us be doing at this point, if not that? Something did go wrong. There are problems to be pointed out. Should we just not talk about that? Do we just say, oops, and ignore what's going on with BP from here on out? In that same hearing earlier this week, Congressman Barton also said that the Chinese are currently drilling off the coast of Florida. And so we can't just let them have all of our oil. We have to keep drilling there. Of course, it's not true that the Chinese are drilling off the coast of Florida. It's, it's not true except on right-wing talk radio. But hey, what, are we going to try to make everybody walk through conspiracy theory detectors on their way to the floor of Congress now? So yes, this is most definitely a Joe Barton problem. But Joe Barton is not an outlier here in the Republican Party. And this is the most important thing about what happened today. He is not an outlier by any stretch of the imagination. Yesterday, after the White House got BP to agree to set aside $20 billion for oil spill victims, the House Republican Study Committee blasted out a statement declaring that, quote, the Obama administration is hard at work exerting its brand of Chicago-style shakedown politics. Just like Joe Burton attacking the White House for getting BP to set aside $20 billion for oil spill victims, even using the same shakedown epithet. The House Republican Study Committee isn't a little outlier either. It's not some one random congressman from Texas tied to the oil industry. The House Republican Study Committee is 114 House Republicans. It's two-thirds, nearly two-thirds of all Republicans in the House. So keep this in mind when you consider the huge uproar and apology over what Joe Barton said in the House today. His I'm sorry. Sorry, BP. Sorry that the Obama administration is being so tough on you. This is not a Joe Barton problem. This is a problem shared by a big majority of all the Republicans in the House. And there's more. When Senator John Cornyn, chairman of the Republican Senate Campaign Committee, was asked about Joe Barton's comments today, Senator Cornyn said, quote, I share the concern. Yesterday, Republican Congresswoman Michelle Bachman defended BP's honor by accusing the White House of wanting to use BP as a, quote, permanent ATM card, part of a broader effort, she said, to, quote, take over private industry. Last week, the top Republican in the House, John Boehner, suggested that BP shouldn't have to pay the full financial burden of this disaster, that taxpayers should foot some of the bill, too. He later had to walk back those comments. Listen, this oil spill is not a political disaster. This is a disaster disaster. But the political consequences of it are turning out to be astonishing. This is like, like in boxing. You think you're facing off against some big, tough opponent who's talking lots of trash and has a great record and it seems really impressive. And then you find out that that big, tough opponent actually has a glass jaw. Joe Barton and the Republican Study Committee and John Cornyn and John Boehner and Michelle Bachman and Haley Barber and all the other Republicans who have stood up for BP since this disaster started have revealed the Republicans' glass jaw on this issue. Republicans are pledging to fight Democrats to the death to stop energy reform. What are they going to fight with? Their great speeches by Joe Barton? They're going to marshal public opinion to their side in their passionate defense of the company that every day continues to cause and inflict this disaster upon us? It is one thing just for the entertainment value to sit back and watch politicians embarrass, embarrass themselves in moments like this. But strategically, this is an important moment. This shows an incredible weakness in the Republican Party. Republicans have said they're going to stop energy reform. They're going to stand up to Democrats on energy issues. Their bluff has now been called. What you saw today is what Republicans have to offer the public in terms of an alternate vision on energy. Apologies to BP and criticism that a fund for victims of this oil spill is unfair. Unfair to the company that caused the disaster. Democrats should feel free to do whatever they want to do on energy. In political terms, there's nothing on the Republican side to constrain them. That's what was learned today. You're not supposed to just point and laugh at the guy's glass jaw. You're supposed to hit him there.